The Christian life is not a place for you to visit. It is not how it was designed. There's so many people who make visits to Christian concepts, to God and what He's doing, but it's a visit. Well, I know people who go to Disney World a couple times a year from here. Some people really enjoy it. But I bet they wouldn't want to live there. I don't know how much you could even afford to buy a $10 pretzel. There are people who really enjoy church. They really enjoy some Christian music. They really enjoy some Christian stuff. Here's the problem. They don't live there. They don't live there. They visit. Man, we had a great time. But the truth is, I don't live there. And so, so many people think to themselves, I wonder why all these promises of God and all these things of God don't work. They don't work because it's not where you live. You're familiar with it. But it is not where you live. It's about in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in a vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. We are not the vine. We're the branch and we're plugged into the vine. This is the place where we abide. The branch cannot survive if it's temporarily plugged into the vine and then it goes and plugs in somewhere else. I'm the branch. I'm plugged into the vine, but I cannot leave the vine and go plug in somewhere else too. And then when I get ready, I need more nourishment. Then I run back over and I plug back into the vine. That is a recipe for a dead branch. At minimum, it's a recipe for a branch that will not bear fruit. Why am I not bearing fruit in my life? It's because I'm not abiding. Dwell. Live there. And I want you, if you would, to turn to John chapter number 17. And this entire chapter 17 is Jesus' prayer. The end of this prayer says that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. The prayer is this prayer of unity, oneness, abiding, and dwelling. What is your life? Where you live? Where are you staying? What is your life about? We see this same basic concept in Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 4. Paul says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we shall also appear with Him in the sky. When Christ, listen to how he defines it. Who is our life? I would ask you today, what is your life? Would you say the Christian life is your life? That's how you do everything. That's how you define everything. That's how you see everything. That's how you react to everything. Is that where you are abiding? And by the way, if you are having trouble answering it, just ask your friends. Just ask the people who you work with. Ask your family. Hey Amen. Do I have to find my life by Christ? Is that how you see me? Or am I defined by the buck? By money? Am I trying to accomplish all these things in life? Is that my life? Is my life defined by what I can get and what I can keep and what I can get from you? Paul says, when Christ, who is our life, where are you living? That's the question. This is what the Christian life is. It is abiding. God glorifies the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. The Son glorifies people. People glorify God. This is what God allows for us. Not because we are on the same level of God by any stretch of the imagination, but God allows us to be a part of that vine. God said, listen, I gave those who are plugged into me my word, and they believed it was right. You know why you have peace in the storm? Because God has given you his word, you believed in his word, and you trust in it. Like, man, things seem crazy, but God is right. I can trust the plan. I can trust that God knows what he's doing. So today, friend, listen, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're living for. I don't know what your life is about. But you are never going to experience these things we talked about by just popping in. Not even for extended periods of time. There are certain things you can only experience by abiding.